Okay, pre-calc, see hello, welcome. We are going to go over the homework on hyperbolas. We did a million hyperbolas uh, in the hyperbola packet, so uh, hopefully this textbook homework was relatively straightforward. It was really just practice. Uh, most of the problems were just, yeah, just, just practice. And then um, there was one, a very interesting problem at the end, uh, number 39, which I might make its own um, separate video. Okay, we begin. Number 11 asks you to find the center, foci, vertices, and sketch using the asymptotes as an aid. Okay, this is about uh, as simple a problem as we can possibly hope for. Um, what is going on here? Okay, even if you almost didn't know anything about hyperbolas, uh, I think that you could just figure this out because um, <clears throat> how should we Oh, okay. Of course, it's possible to, to just kind of memorize the, the formula and just kind of chug out the formulas, and to some extent, I encourage that. But um, at least a little bit, let's sort of think through this. Um, this y squared over 25 perhaps uh, is best to think of as y over 5 squared minus x over 12 um, squared equals 1. And if you think about it this way, then you see that the y coordinate is being stretched up by a factor of 5, and the x-coordinate is being um, stretched out by a factor of 12. And so, um, this requires us really just then to understand the y-squared minus x-squared equals 1 hyperbola. And you can either just kind of think about this a little bit, or um, uh, memorize this, or, or do something. Uh, what is the y-squared uh, minus x-squared equals 1 hyperbola? What does it, what does it look like? Uh, well, you can just sort of see uh, what it looks like. What are some numbers which uh, satisfy this? Uh, for example, if y is 1, then x has to be 0. And so I do have this point um, 1, sorry, 0, comma 1. Uh, if y is 1, uh, x is 0. And I also have a point 0, comma negative 1, because it's also um, true that if y is negative 1, x has to be 0. So, I don't know, that's kind of nice or something. Uh, you might also, um, this is sort of a repeat of something that I did in the, the video before break, you might also um, write this as y squared equals x squared plus 1, uh, which suggests that uh, when y is positive, uh, y is always greater than 1, uh, or y is always less than negative 1. I guess uh, less than, uh, greater than or equal to, or, or, or less than or equal to, uh, which is to say that things are going to be happening kind of down here and up here. And okay, the answer is, yeah, this is just a vertical hyperbola. The final uh, thing to, to understand, uh, maybe, is that this thing has asymptotes. And uh, perhaps this is the, the simplest way uh, to do this, looking at y squared equals x squared plus 1, what can I say about y? y is like plus or minus... Sorry, y is uh, plus or minus root x squared plus 1, which is to say that as um, x goes to infinity, y is looking a lot like, well, just x. Uh, because uh, if you square a really big number and add 1 and then take the square root, it's pretty much just, it's pretty much just x. And also, as x is going to negative infinity, uh, now, why is, well, okay, actually, let's just sort of, sort of stop there, because I think we've uh, kind, of, kind of proven our point without getting lost in uh, all the uh, kind of plus and minuses and stuff. What is the point that we've proven? Uh, we've proven that the line y equals x is an asymptote, and combining this with some things we already know about hyperbolas, I think I, I know exactly what this hyperbola is going to look like. It's going to look like this. Okay. So this is the unit hyperbola. This is a square hyperbola, uh, so-called square hyperbola, because the asymptotes um, are perpendicular uh, to each other. And if you want to get into the kind of happy box uh, sort of situation, um, the, the box is the, this thing. Well, now I see that my picture is not great. But um, the, the, the so-called happy box uh, the, the box uh, for which the asymptotes are the diagonals, uh, they are, this is going to be a 2 by 2 box centered at the, um, uh, at the origin. So, okay, uh, so that's, that's what makes it a, a square uh, hyperbola. 
uh, which it, it's that the, the rectangle is in fact a square, is one way of putting it, uh, or that the, the slopes of the asymptotes are one and negative one. Uh, that's just two different ways of saying the same thing. Okay, so suppose you have just sort of been through this entire, I'm gonna put a big red box around this, this was all kind of prerequisite uh, knowledge, or it's knowledge that you could simply, you know, remind yourself uh, in a few moments by sort of thinking it through. Uh, well, then uh, when it comes to doing problems uh, like this, with confidence, I think it should be sort of easy now, right? What um, should we be understanding about this? Well, um, this is just like the unit hyperbola, but the y coordinate has been stretched out by a factor of 5, and the x coordinate has been stretched out by a factor of 12, like I say. So if that's um, negative 12, 0, and that over there is 12, 0, and up here is 0, 5, and down here is 0, negative 5, then um, these uh, vertices determine the happy box. So I'll draw the happy box. Sha, 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 sha. Then the diagonals of this box are the asymptotes of the hyperbola. And this is a vertical uh, hyperbola that's been stretched out by a factor of five. So the hyperbola itself is going to be that one. So that's just a kind of basic uh, remedial lesson on how to, to graph hyperbolas. Um, what were we uh, supposed to do? Let's see. Um, find the, the center, foci, vertices, etc., etc., etc. Okay, let's just uh, do this uh, really quick. What is the center of this thing? Well, it's 0, 0. What are the vertices? Uh, the vertices are, are these two points right here. Boom, uh, boom. They're the points on the, on the hyperbola. Uh, well, they're those two points on the hyperbola. Um, so that's 0, 5, and 0, negative 5. Uh, what else am I supposed to do? Foci. Um, the foci are introduced as the objects which actually like kind of define and create the hyperbola. But here I'm given the equation and I'm sort of working backwards to find what the foci are. Well, what are the, the, the foci? In any, um, well, in any hyperbola, uh, we have that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, a is 5. It's the factor by which uh, a we, we, we use consistently to, to refer to the factor by which the um, hyperbola is, is stretched in the direction um, that it is pointing. Or another way to put it is that a is, uh, by definition, the uh, length of the half of the transverse axis. I guess that's uh, another way of putting it, or even better, uh, more simply, a is just the distance from the center to, to one of the vertices. That's probably the simplest thing to say. And uh, what is b? This was the one that we found kind of uh, difficult at first, but uh, b is just the, the factor by which things are stretched horizontally. So b is 12. Okay, and uh, well, um, uh, a squared plus b squared is c squared because we in fact just defined uh, b squared uh, to, to have this property and then discovered uh, what it uh, meant. But uh, in this case then, um, c would be 13 because that's a well-known Pythagorean triple. That means somewhat off my picture here, uh, I won't try to make this uh, accurate, is going to be this point 0 comma 13 will be one focus and 0 comma negative 13 will be the other focus. Sort of, sort of very, uh, very not to scale, but okay, you know, that's all right. Uh, 0 comma 13 and 0 comma negative 13. Okay, what else was I supposed to do? That's pretty much it. Graph it. Use the asymptotes as an aid. It doesn't specifically say to give the equations of the asymptotes, but I might as well do that. Uh, what is this? This is just the line with slope of 5 over 12. So that's 5 twelfths x. And this is the line y equals negative 5 twelfths x. And yeah, I'll just maybe, um, maybe I'll just kind of leave it at that. If you wanted to do just, just to say one more thing, that if you needed to sort of remind yourself or convince yourself that these were the correct equations for the asymptotes, you may always um, <coughs> perform an algebraic argument which is similar to the algebraic argument that we did in general, but perhaps it's actually more convincing when you use specific numbers like this. So, so here we go, um, you know, just basically move this stuff over to the other side. 
So when I do that, that becomes um, x squared plus 144 over 144. I think I did that right. And uh, now uh, multiply both sides by 25. So I get that y squared is 25 over 144 times x squared plus 144. And now, what does this tell me? This tells me that y is pretty much, well not pretty much, y just is uh, 5 twelfths times the square root of x squared plus 144. And I think now you should feel that for very, very large values of x, um, that this entire expression, uh, root x squared plus 44, is pretty much just going to become like x. And that shows that for very, very large values of x, uh, the hyperbola is going to look like the line y equals 5 twelfths uh, x. That's what explains this one, and this one is just you sort of chase the negative when you take the square to both sides, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this was just a, a review. If you sort of almost knew, knew nothing about hyperbolas, this is just a review of, of, of the basic stuff. This is like the easiest problem uh, possible. Okay, so let's go now like a lot faster, and uh, with less commentary, we can just kind of do some, some more of these. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. Okay, 15, um, maybe, is just going to be more. It is x minus 1 squared over 4 minus y plus 2 um, squared over 1 uh, equals 1. So, okay, um, this is just uh, a lot of algebra, or, or actually a small amount of algebra and a small amount of understanding. What can I say about this? Well, because this is generally uh, in the form uh, x squared minus y squared, this is going to be a horizontal um, hyperbola. That's a sort of fact number one. Uh, what else? What can I say about the center? Well, instead of being at the origin, it's going to be at 1 comma negative 2. So that's uh, good to know. And pretty much at that point, well, what about this? The x coordinate is a horizontal hyperbola, but the x coordinate is being stretched out by a factor of 2, just to say that a is 2, and the y coordinate is being stretched out just not, so, so b is 1, and in fact maybe just right now I can even tell you that c is root 5. Uh, okay, so the rest I just do via picture. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to go over 1 and down 2. That is the center, 1 comma negative 2. Um, what else did I say? I said this is horizontal, and I said it's horizontal, it's been stretched out by a factor of 2. So that means that my vertices are going to be 2 away from the center, instead of being just kind of 1 away on the unit hyperbola. So I'm going to have um, one vertex here at 3, comma, negative 2, and another vertex here at negative um, 1, comma, negative 2. Alright, so that part was pretty easy. Then we have a um, uh, b of 1, um, so that means it's not really being stretched out in the y direction at all, which is to say that the happy box is just one up and one down uh, from those vertices. And so, let's squeeze this in, cha 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 cha, the diagonals of that box, which will pass through the uh, center. Um, are the asymptotes of the hyperbola, and um, the hyperbola itself is going to be horizontal and is going to look like this. So, sha -pa -pa -pa. and okay, here this is going to run into the like that. That's pretty good. Uh, it's good enough for me. Uh, also, c is root five, which is about like you know two point one or something like that. So I'm going to have one uh, folk. Yeah. It's going to be very close, therefore, to the vertex. This is going to be, instead of 3 comma negative 2, it's going to be 1 plus root 5 comma negative 2. And this one right here is going to have coordinates. Uh, let's see, uh, I go over 1 and then I go back negative root, root 5, so 1 minus root 5 comma negative 2. Um, so that will be like minus 1.2, something like that. 
Okay, so uh, good. Let's see, what were the actual directions? Same directions, uh, which were a little bit vague, right? It was um, give the center, give the vertices. Okay, I don't think I need to write them down specifically. Uh, here they are. Well, I will write them down just because. What are the, the vertices? They are uh, 1 minus root 5 comma negative 2. And 1 plus root 5 comma negative 2. Those are the, 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 two, uh, the two vertices. What are the foci? No, sorry. Those are the foci. Yikes. Those are the foci. That's what I meant to say. The vertices are uh, these ones. 1, um, negative 2, and 3, negative 2. Okay, so I found the, the vertices uh, and the foci. The last thing to do, okay, it's... Arguably, they didn't actually ask you to do this, but uh, I think we should um, write down what the equations of these asymptotes are. And uh, what are these asymptotes? Well, they're lines with slope, you know, up 1 over 2. Uh, but they don't pass through the origin, they pass through 1, comma, negative 2. So one of the lines is going to be 1 plus 2 equals 1 half. Uh, x minus 1, and the other one is going to be y plus 2 equals negative 1 half x minus 1. These are the lines which go through the point 1 comma negative 2, and which have slope 1 half this one, and slope negative 1 half this one. Okay, cool, let's call that done. Um, 19 is hopefully the same thing and isn't much more difficult or taking up any more space the only difference is now you have to jump through some, some algebra hoops to get this in a form such that you recognize. So this is 9x squared minus y squared minus 36x minus 6y plus 18 equals 0. Let me just double check to make sure I don't do that wrong. 9 squared minus y squared minus 36 minus 6y plus 18 equals 0. Good. Okay, so now we just have to do careful algebra. So what do I get? 9x squared minus 36x. So I'm collecting the x's together. I'm collecting the y's together. And I'm moving 18 over to the other side. Okay, so that's 9x squared minus 4x. I'm being very careful. You really shouldn't do fewer steps than I do. Because I'm, you know, quite good at algebra. So, all right, there, there's that. Now I have to be careful to, to, to factor out this negative. So when I factor out the negative here, this gives me y squared plus 6y, cha 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 cha. And uh, if you're doing this at home, you know, with a pencil, don't be, uh, you know, so arrogant uh, as to try to do it all in, in one line. Here, um, I'm using colors, so I think it's, it's pretty clear. I think that should be one step. And then sort of next step now is to complete the square. When we complete the square, we need that to be a 4, which means I just added 36 um, to the left-hand side. So I'll add 36 to the right-hand side. And this needs to be a 9, so I just subtracted 9, so that means I also need to subtract 9. Uh, okay, that is going to clear things up quite a bit, so this will be 9x minus 2 squared minus y plus 3 squared equals, and that whole thing becomes just 9 over there. So this problem is working out nicely. If I divide both sides by 9, then I'm going to get x minus 2 squared over, well, 1, if you find that helpful, minus y plus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. All right, so step 1 is just the sort of uh, mindless algebraic manipulation of this general quadratic expression in two variables into a form uh, that I can now analyze. Um, so now it's just like the previous problem. Um, what can I say about this? It's going to be a, once again, a horizontal um, hyperbola because it's in the form x squared minus y squared. The center will be at uh, 2, negative 3. The, um, this is a 1, so a is 1. The, the, the horizontal stretch is just going to be 1. b is 3 um, because the y coordinate is being stretched out by a factor of 3, and therefore... Uh, by the Pythagorean relationship between a, b, and c in a hyperbola, I can say that c is going to be root 10. So that's just a little bit more than 3, 3.1, something like that. Uh, great. Uh, let's just graph it, and then that'll be that. 2, negative 3, so okay. So we got a little bit of this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Boom. 
uh, 2, negative 3 is the center. Then where are the vertices? Well, they are 1 to the left and 1 to the right of this point. So there's going to be one here and another one over here. So that'll be uh, 3, negative 3, and 1, negative 3, those, those vertices. And then um, the y coordinate is being stretched out by a factor of 3. So that means that the happy box is going to look like this. Uh, bon, bon. Cha, 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 cha. And the diagonals of the happy box are going to be these lines here with slope uh, 3, I guess. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a horizontal hyperbola, so it's going to, to pass through like that. And I'll just give the, um, I'll just find the foci and the, and the equations of the asymptotes and, and, and then we'll be good. Um, let's see, what are, what are, where are the, the, the foci? Well, the foci are going to be root 10 away from the center. So the center here is at 2 comma negative 3, and therefore the foci are going to be at uh, 2 plus root 10. So they'll be like mm, somewhere around here-ish. That'll be 2 plus root 10 comma negative 3. And the other focus will be, you know, over here at 2 minus root 10 comma negative 3. That looks not terrible. I guess it should be more... Um, well, I guess it would be like a little bit more over here. Yeah, that would be kind of better. And maybe even this too, right? This is just, uh, instead of being over one, it'll be over one and like another two. So, so that, that looks about right. One. Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much good. Okay. Um, the coordinates of the foci in red, the coordinates of the vertices in green, um, one negative three and, um, and, and 3, negative 3, the only thing left to do is to give the equations of these asymptotes. They didn't exactly tell you to do this, but uh, I think we, we should. Um, what are these equations? Well, they both go through the point 2, negative 3, and their slopes are 3 and negative 3. So this is just an Algebra 1 problem now. This is going to be y plus 3 equals 3x minus 2, and y plus 3 equals negative 3x minus 2. Okay, that was number 19. How many more do I have left of these? I think just one more that just forces me to like crank through tedious algebra. Good. Um, and this one is not even that tedious, but it is a little bit of an endurance test because um, the numbers don't work out nicely. So, you know, I don't like to give too many like this. Um, all the problems so far, all the problems in the packet, I think, and all of these problems I've just assigned, all were nice in that, you know, the 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 a and b values were integers. And so when the a and b values are integers, it just makes it really easy to, to graph. But if the a and b values are not integers, you know, don't, don't cry about it, just uh, deal with it. So this uh, 23, I think the directions are the same. Find the center foci vertices of the hyperbola, sketch a graph of the hyperbola, it's asked with the aid of a, oh, it says with the aid of a graphing utility. Hopefully you've caught on that we, we ignore those um, directions. I don't know why you would want to do this with the gravity duty. Minus the risk. Okay. So here, in some ways, this is easier. Uh, but if I divide by 6, what do I get? x squared over 3 minus y squared over 2 equals 1. So this is a hyperbola. It's going to also be horizontal. And the, the center is going to be at the origin because... because um, the only thing that makes this problem worth talking about is that uh, A, the factor by which we stretch in the x direction, is just like root 3. And B, the factor by which we stretch in the y direction, is root 2. So just like kind of don't, don't be scared of that. And then C is going to be uh, root 13. Okay. Well, um, I'm already kind of, kind of bored with this problem, uh, to, be, to be frank. Um, this is, we're being stretched up, that's 1, 2, 1, 2, then where are the vertices going to be? Uh, they're going to be uh, here at around root 3, which is around 1.7. So that's um, root 3, comma, 0, and the other one will be over here at 
negative root 3 comma 0 and then if the so let's see 1 2 uh, 1 2 then the happy box um, will uh, have dimensions while we're being stretched vertically by a factor of root 2 so that's like 1.4 so this is kind of you know know your stuff so much that you're not freaked out by gross numbers um, and well there's my happy box and the hyperbola itself is going to to look like this and that's all there is to it um, where the foci are going to be they will be at root 13 it's, that's 3 something um, so whatever uh, root 13 comma 0 and uh, over here negative root 13 comma 0 those will be the the coordinates of the foci and uh, what else do we need to do we need to give the equations of these asymptotes I suppose um, what is this asymptote well the slope of this asymptote is up root 2 over root 3. So this is just y equals root 2 over root 3x. And this one is y equals negative root 2 over root 3x. Okay, so, good. Uh, good. Four more normal problems uh, to go, and then one kind of kind of crazy problem. Um, but those were, the, those were the only ones left with where you just have to like do a lot of algebra. Now we are going to do more sort of sort of thinking problems. So these are a little bit shorter, I hope. Um, so let's go. 31. What was 31? Uh, they give you the vertices. The vertices are plus or minus 1 comma 0. And the asymptotes are y equals plus or minus 3x. Okay, so actually this is already a slightly interesting problem um, that's maybe not so easy. Let's draw a picture. Actually, I guess it is pretty easy. Uh, let's draw a picture. Well, uh, exactly kind of what it says here, right? The vertices are at 1, 0 and, and um, negative 1, 0. So just throw those in there. And then the asymptotes are going to be the lines with slope 3. So if that's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, then uh, what we mean is that, that these are the asymptotes. Cha, cha, cha. And so, okay, the, the box is now sort of forming uh, before my eyes. Um, if I know that the, the vertices are 1, then that means that my box must look like this. And so that's B has to be 3. A more kind of algebraic way of doing this is to say that, well, if the vertices are, are at uh, plus or minus 1 comma 0, then the midpoint uh, of the segment connecting the vertices, the point halfway between the vertices, is the center. So in this case, the center is at the origin. And if the center is at the origin, the vertices are 1 away, then we could translate that into the language of A is 1. Uh, but I also know that if the vertices are um, on the x-axis like that, then I know that this is also a horizontal hyperbola. And, okay, with a, with, a, uh, with a as 1, well, any horizontal hyperbola, you know, the slope is going to be like b over a. So, um, you know, this just means in this case that just b is, b is 3. I think the goal for this problem is just to break the equation, I assume. Yeah. So uh, I think I'm just ready to, to be done. This is going to be uh, a hyperbola in the form x squared minus y squared. And the x-coordinate has been stretched out by a factor of 1, and the y-coordinate has been stretched out by a factor of 3. So, so there it is. Okay, good. Um, one down, three to go of this just kind of think it out, understand, draw a picture, give the equation style problem. <laughs> uh, 33. Yeah. The vertices are at 2, 0. So vertices are at 2, 0, and 6, 0. And the foci are at 0, 0, 8, 0. Foci 0, 0, and 8, 0. Okay, well, uh, let's make a picture. Only thing we can do. 
just to make sure I'm not screwing this up. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah. Okay. So um, we make a picture. Well, um, well, the vertices are so okay. Let's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, vertices are at two zero, cha cha cha, and six zero, cha cha cha, six zero and two zero. Okay, well, if those are the vertices, then just first of all, I can just tell you what the, the center is. Um, the center is going to be halfway between the vertices, and so that's going to be four zero. Okay, great. Uh, what else? Well, uh, I am also, oh, and, okay, uh, so this is going to be, again, a horizontal um, hyperbola. Maybe I'll write this down here. Horizontal hyperbola. And the other thing is that A is going to be 2, because we've been stretched by a factor of 2. The vertices are 2 away from the center. Well, uh, what is the other piece of information given? It's that the foci are at 0, 0, and 8, 0. And, okay, that's really just a way of um, telling us that the foci are four away from the center. And if the foci are four away from the center, then that's just another way of saying that C is four. Okay, and now I just do the Pythagorean theorem in my head, and I get that B is root 12. I think I did that right, 60 minus 4, yep. Um, and so B is in fact just uh, whatever, well, it doesn't even matter, I might as well just leave it as root 12, because I'm about to write the equation. Uh, I feel like I should, you know, graph this, or at least kind of fake half graph it. It's going to be some hyperbola, which is going to be, you know, not, not accurate, but uh, roughly it's going to look like that. Horizontal, center at 4, 0, vertices at 2, 0, and 6, 0, foci, you know, where they are. Now I just have to write the equation, uh, and the equation is going to be, well, it's a horizontal hyperbola, the x-coordinate has been uh, shifted by a fact by 4, so it's going to be of the form x minus 4 squared minus y squared, and the x-coordinate has been stretched by a factor of 2, so therefore that's 4, and the y-coordinate has been stretched by a factor of root 12, so that's, that's 12. So that's how I do those kind of problems and, and think about them. Okay, two more to go, 35 and 37. Um, here, let's erase all this. <laughs> See what time it is? Oh, yeah. Um, great. Okay, 35 and 37. So, 35. Uh, the vertices, vertices are um, two comma plus or minus three, and the other thing I don't like this. Um, I don't like this phrase, this term, solution point. But hopefully you understood what they were talking about. We had a problem like this in the ellipse uh, section as well. A uh, solution point is just just as a point on the hyperbola. Okay, um, so what can I do with this uh, information? Well, I can make a picture. That's really the thing to do. So, uh, 2 comma plus or minus 3. So we go over 2, and that's a little bit sloppy, but that's good enough. So 2 comma 3, that's one vertex. And over here, 2 comma negative 3, that's the other vertex. Well, therefore, um, the center of this hyperbola is going to be halfway between uh, 2, 3, and 2, negative 3, so that's, that's 2, comma, 0. So what else can I gather from this uh, situation? I can gather that this is going to be a vertical um, hyperbola, and the vertices are 3 away from the center, so A is 3. And uh, what else? Well, not much else, right? A solution point, um, 0, comma, 5. So up here uh, at 0, comma, 5, that's just a point they're giving me that, you know, that this thing uh, kind of goes through. So I'm expecting something that looks kind of like that. Uh, that. That is pretty much uh, what's going on. All right, so now I just have to do some algebra to find out, to find out what, what to do here. And, okay, what do I... I guess I can squeeze it in over here. What do I know? I know that this is a vertical hyperbola with... Um, with center at 2 comma 0. So it's going to be at, no, it's going to be y squared minus x minus 2 squared 
uh, jump jump equals one. In other words, the y coordinate hasn't been shifted, but the x coordinate has been shifted two to the right. And the y coordinate has been stretched by a factor of three, so that is nine. And the only thing I don't know is, is b, basically. Um, so, uh, this is the equation of my hyperbola. The only thing left to do is find b and I'm done. So the only thing to do is just plug in the point zero comma five and then just do algebra and, and solve for b. So that's really all we have to do now. Plug in zero for x and five for y, so I get 25 ninths minus, if I plug in zero for x, I'm gonna get uh, four over b squared equals one. So um, 25 ninths minus one equals four over b squared. Um, just checking my work, but I think it's right, yeah. Um, so that means four over b squared is um, 25 minus, minus 9 is 16, so it's 16 ninths. And so what does that give me? Um, something. Let me, well, okay, this is kind of silly, but 16b squared equals 36. So b squared equals 36 over 16, otherwise known as something, 9 fourths. Um, dividing both top and bottom by 4, yep. So therefore, b is 3 halves, and now that I know that b is 3 halves, I can just write the final answer. y squared over 9 minus uh, x minus 2 squared over 9 fourths uh, equals 1. Chop, 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 chop. Okay, good. Uh, one more to go. 37. Um, 0, 2, and 6, 2. 0, 2... Uh, 6, 2. Okay. Uh, are the vertices. And then they also tell me that the asymptotes are these two lines, y equals 2 thirds x and y equals 4 minus 2 thirds x. Okay, so, yeah, what should we do? I guess we should make a picture, and I'm going to squeeze this in here. Uh, all right, so we begin, uh, 0, 2, 6, 2, so, uh, bump, bump, uh, is 1, these are the vertices, I believe? Yeah, uh, vertices. Vertices. 0, 2, and 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. Okay, 0, 2, 6, 2. Great. Uh, well, uh, what else do I know? I, oh, so therefore, where's the center? It's halfway between um, 0, 2, and 6, 2, so that's uh, 3, 2. All right, so I got, I got the center of my hyperbola, and I also know that uh, it's going to be horizontal, and I also know, let me just write this stuff down, that the, the center is 3, 2, as I just said, and then um, the vertices are 3 away, so A is, is 3 in this case. Um, okay, um, how do I work this asymptote stuff into things? I think the simple thing to do is just, is just make a picture. Um, if one of the asymptotes is the line y equals 2 thirds x, then it means I'm going up 2 over 3. So it's, it's this line here. Cha, 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 cha. And the other one is 4 minus 2 thirds x. So let's go up to 4 and then have slope negative 2 thirds. So down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. So okay, in this case, the numbers just worked out so nicely that, I mean, the box just appeared before my eyes as being, uh, as being this one. And um, therefore, uh, I see immediately that, that B is 2, and, and I'm just kind of uh, done. If you wanted to do it in a more algebraic way, uh, I suppose you could just know that in any horizontal hyperbola, the slope of the asymptote is going to be up B over A, and so if the slope is going to be uh, b over a in a horizontal hyperbola, and I already have that the slope is, is 2 thirds, and also that a is 3, then it just has to be true that b is 2. I don't know, that, that seems kind of, kind of, uh, kind of silly, but uh, that's, that's one way if you want to, to do it with algebra or something. But anyway, uh, there it is. The hyperbola itself is going to look like this. Cha-cha-cha. 
and cha cha cha. And now I just have to write down the equation of it. What is the equation? Well, it's going to be uh, horizontal, so x minus 3 squared minus y minus 2 squared uh, equals 1. And the x coordinate has been stretched out by a factor of 3, so that's 9. And the y coordinate has been stretched out by a factor of 2, so that's 4. And that's all there is to it. Okay, boom. All right, that completes all but one of the problems. Uh, I think I have time to do this right now. So I'm going to, let's see. Um, well, I guess I'll just keep, I guess I'll just keep the video rolling. So this final problem is, uh, you know, significantly more difficult and more interesting than the other problems that we have been doing. And in fact, it's, you know, quite a big jump in level of difficulty. And it's also just much cooler and sort of demonstrates the entire point of, of, of uh, maybe understanding uh, hyperbolas. Okay, let's, let's do it. So uh, here we go. Uh, this has a name. It's called Sound Location. And here's what it says. There are three listening stations located at uh, 4400 comma zero. Let's call that listening station A. Uh, there is another listening station, 4400 comma 1100, cha cha, and uh, another um, listening station, which is at negative 4400 comma 1100. No, sorry, comma zero, comma zero. So let's just call this B and let's call this C. Okay, they are listening stations. There, uh, you know, some kind of uh, recording equipment is set up and it's uh, recording, you know, various noises. Okay. Uh, they monitor an explosion. Whoa, that's pretty exciting. Explosions, bombs, fire. If the latter two stations, as in station B and station C, detect the explosion one second and five seconds after the first, respectively, determine the coordinates of the explosion. Whoa. Assume that the coordinate system is measured in feet and that sound travels at 1,100 feet per second. Okay, so the, the speed of sound uh, is 1,100 uh, feet per second. I don't know how close that is to the actual um, speed of sound, but that does explain these otherwise kind of odd uh, numbers that we have here. And, uh, well, yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's go. Um, that was, uh, maybe difficult to process, but before I do anything, I'm going to make a picture. So let's make a picture. Um, let's do it kind of over here. And so I now have, I'm establishing a coordinate system in which, uh, my units are, are feet. And I'm going to plot these three listening stations. And, uh, because, um, the speed of sound is 1100 feet per second, and I'm monitoring, you know, the number of seconds it takes to, to hear this explosion, then um, sort of what's relevant to me is that, you know, s the sound is moving 1,100 feet every second. And if the sound is moving 1,100 feet every second, then it seems like I should let my units be uh, 1,100 feet. And so that's what I'll do. So I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So uh, what do I have here? Sure, that's, that's good enough. So I have this point over here uh, that I called uh, A. It's the first listening station. It's 4400 comma zero. I have another listening station, which is up here. Uh, and that listening station, calling it uh, B, uh, is 4400 comma 1100. And then there's listening station C, uh, which is over here at negative 4,400 comma zero. Okay, and all right, now that I have this picture going and I kind of understand what's going on, so an explosion happens somewhere. The goal of this problem is to figure out where the explosion happened. And all right, what information do I have? Well, the information is, and here's the thing, is that um, you, know, you have these three listening stations, so the explosion happens, and now we are trying to determine where the explosion happened based on the uh, 
amount of time that elapsed in between the three listening stations detecting the explosion. So the explosion happens, and the explosion somewhere, and causes a big, loud noise. But the closer you are to the explosion, of course, the uh, sooner you're going to hear it. And um, let's just imagine that all of their uh, equipment is synchronized, you know, precisely, and it's very, very accurate. So what is the data given in this problem again? Um, the latter two stations detect the explosion one second and five seconds after the first, respectively. Okay, in other words, A, here's the explosion first, B, here's the explosion one second after A does, and C, here's the explosion five seconds after A does. Alright, so you have to put enough effort into this problem and read it enough times so that you got to at least that point, right? An explosion happens, A hears it, B also hears it, C also hears it. When they come back together later and compare their data with their precisely uh, synchronized uh, instruments, um, uh, A, B, and C uh, realize that A heard it first, B heard it exactly one second uh, after A, and C heard it five seconds after A. Alright, well just vague common sense basic understanding uh, indicates that if A hears it first and B hears it next, or one second later, then the explosion itself must be happening somewhere down here, right? Like, uh, because it has to be, you know, the explosion has to be closer to A than it is to B, because A hears the explosion first, B hears it next. And um, C hears it, you know, quite a bit later, so the explosion is definitely going to be closer to A than it is to C. Okay, um, right, well, uh, if you are very observant, you can realize something, and in fact, you have to realize this thing, uh, or otherwise you, you can't do the problem, and that is that B hears the explosion exactly one second after A does. But, how far away is B from A? B is exactly 1100 feet away from A. And sound travels 1100 feet per second. So in other words, B is sort of like one second farther from A. Uh, B is exactly sort of one second farther away from A. Or, or rather, if something happened at A, uh, B would hear it exactly one second later. And so there's now a strong bit of common sense uh, required uh, to, to see that, okay, if the explosion's happening somewhere down here, in fact, this explosion must be happening directly underneath A. The explosion must be on a line, uh, on the line, um, you know, the, the, the uh, vertical line uh, connecting A and B. In other words, it must be, the, the explosion must have X coordinate 4400. It must lie directly below A. Why? Because only if the explosion lies directly below A will the explosion uh, register at A and then register at B exactly one second later. And, okay, if you're kind of like skeptical of this or something, uh, I, can, I can make a kind of an argument uh, for you. See, I kind of forget how I do this. Suppose you, you really are still not convinced. Well, okay, let's let, imagine that the, the explosion happened here at point E, where E is not directly beneath uh, A. Okay, well, now, uh, if that's the case, then uh, I can now sort of draw some lines. There's this uh, green line connecting uh, A to E, and I don't know how far A is from E, uh, but I do know how, let's see, um, well, let me just call it uh, something, like, uh, call it, you know, um, pick some, some, new, some new variable, uh, P or something like that. So P, uh, P for explosion. P is how uh, far away the explosion is from A. Okay, uh, great. And, um, and now, uh, of course, how far is, uh, and then also um, uh, B is going to hear the explosion. But if I draw this in now with a blue line, uh, how far must B uh, be away from the explosion? Well, B hears the explosion um, exactly one second after A does, so B must be 1,100 feet farther away from the explosion than A is. In other words, uh, B must be P plus 1,100 feet away from the explosion. But, uh, of course, this now is just impossible. 
because uh, A and B are also 1,100 uh, feet apart, and now this is like a, a violation of the triangle inequality. Or, if you prefer, it's like a degenerate triangle in which A, B, and E are, are collinear. All right, this might have been a little bit overkill. I think the, the thing I said a second ago is actually the clearest way to understand this, which is that um, uh, B hears the explosion 1100, uh, B hears the explosion one second after A, so B must be 1100 uh, feet farther away from the explosion than A is. And since A and B are precisely 1,100 feet apart, what I have now convinced you in an extremely thorough fashion is that this explosion is happening directly below, oops, uh, directly below uh, A. Okay, so let me just um, draw this uh, piece uh, back in here. So this is, uh, we said, 4,400, zero. Okay, great. Um, well, now I can draw in this point E. So I'll just put this point E in here, and I'll just, you know, put like a little for explosion. Okay, so the only thing uh, left to figure out uh, is, you know, what this distance is. So let me make a red, a uh, blue line here, and let's call this, you know, like Y or something. Let, let's let Y be the distance A is from, from E. Okay, well, I still don't know what Y is, uh, so it's now time to uh, bring in my other piece of information which is that C hears the explosion uh, five seconds after A does. Well, if C hears the explosion five seconds after A, then I know that C must be, and sound travels at uh, 1,100 feet per second, then C must be 5,500 feet farther from E than A is from E. So... I can say that the distance C is from E has got to be 5,500 plus Y. Why is the distance A is from E? Uh, the explosion happens, whoosh, A hears it, and five seconds later, uh, C hears it. So C is five seconds farther away. Um, okay, and this problem now is pretty much done <laughs> uh, because uh, I already know this segment here it's just 8,800, and this is a right angle. And the simplest way to do this problem is now just to solve this equation, uh, 8,800 squared uh, plus y squared uh, equals uh, 5,500 plus y quantity squared. And okay, these numbers are big, but... Um, this is not actually hard, and I've done this problem before. Um, I could even like do it in my head or, or, or something, but that would just be for show off. Uh, I can't remember the answer, but I think it's like 2750 or something like that. Um, yeah, I have it right here. Just kick the camera a little bit. Hopefully it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so I think that one does this, and no, I take it back. Y is 4290, yeah. And, yep, um, hold on, is that correct? I believe that is the correct answer. So yeah, um, some doing some algebra, possibly using a calculator to, to help you uh, with the big numbers. I actually did it without a calculator, but it was a little bit uh, just me being stubborn. Um, you get that Y is 4290, and that is actually the end of, of the problem. Okay, uh, so, 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 so what, you might be thinking. Why would I ever do such a problem? This is just ridiculous. Uh, or, or rather, maybe it's not ridiculous. Maybe this is really, really cool. But maybe the real question right now should be, what does this have to do with hyperbolas? Okay. Indeed, what does this have to do with hyperbolas? What is this doing uh, sitting here in the hyperbola section? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, a uh, less efficient but more interesting way to solve this problem is to uh, consider just A and C alone. What if all I told you was uh, that C hears the explosion five seconds after A does? Well, if C hears the explosion five seconds after A does, then what I can say about this explosion is that it must be 5,500 feet farther from C than it is from A. And that is the exact definition of a hyperbola. So, what I have now is this giant hyperbola, I guess I'll just draw it in black here, 
Uh, and it's going to look something like this. And what is this hyperbola? It is, here it's, it's ignoring, uh, ignoring the um, uh, point B uh, for a moment. You know, person B uh, with, their, with their B data uh, from listening station B, you know, hasn't arrived yet. So A and C are just um, uh, conspiring together and comparing notes. And A says, well, I heard the explosion. C says, well, I heard it exactly five seconds later. And together, they sit down and try to figure out where the explosion happened. Well, all they can say between the two of them, A and C, is that wherever the explosion happened, it must have been 5,500 uh, feet further from C than from A. That is the precise definition of a hyperbola. A hyperbola is the locus of points such that the differences in the distances to the foci is a constant. And so in this case, the foci are A and C. Um, and uh, how far apart uh, are they? Uh, they're they're 8,800 apart from each other. And so that means that we have a, a horizontal hyperbola with little c equal to, to 4,400. And, uh, yeah. And um, what's the other piece of information that I know? I know that this uh, difference is 5,500. And if the difference is 5,500, then, um, then that's the length of the transverse axis. And that means that little a is 2750. To put that another way, um, the, the, we, we have seen in a, in a hyperbola that you know, 2a in a hyperbola, uh, a is the distance from the, the center to a vertex, 2a is the distance between the vertices, so the, the length of the transverse axis. This is the constant. Um, so the constant for any hyperbola is uh, sort of how much farther uh, a point on the hyperbola is uh, from one focus uh, versus the other. And in this case, that constant uh, difference is 5,500. Uh, and if that constant difference is 5,500, then little a is 2,750. Okay, and then uh, one could, if one wanted, uh, do the Pythagorean theorem, of course, in any hyperbola, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I think uh, what, you, what you find is that b squared is something really disgusting, like, um, well, you get 550 root 39. 550 root 39. Okay, and so uh, a sort of deeper way of thinking about this problem is that two, with two listening stations, uh, I can narrow down the explosion to being on some branch of the hyperbola with those two listening stations as foci. This is the, the, this is the deep kind of explanation of what's going on. And this entire problem illustrates something called triangulation. If you want to monitor exactly uh, when something happened, then uh, two listening stations isn't quite good enough. Because given two listening stations, uh, and, the, and knowing the precise gap in the time that it took uh, for those two listening stations to, to register the sound of the explosion, only tells me that the explosion happened on, on some, some branch of some hyperbola uh, uh, with those two points as foci. But if you give me now three points, then uh, by, taking, you know, uh, uh, them, by taking them in pairs, points A and B also determine a hyperbola. Uh, in this case, the hyperbola is kind of degenerate, and so you get like a line, which makes this problem a little bit easier. But in general, uh, were you to give me uh, three listening stations, um, like I have here, uh, in general, uh, if you tell me the gap between these two, then there's some hyperbola such that the explosion must have happened somewhere on that red branch. And if you also tell me that the, the B heard it uh, after some, some time after A did, then there'll be another hyperbola with A and B as foci, uh, and uh, therefore the intersection of those two hyperbolas uh, will tell me the, uh, the, uh, the actual um, uh, site of the explosion. So uh, this entire uh, science uh, of, uh, or engineering of, of uh, using triangulation with listening stations to determine where an event uh, occurred uh, is actually an application of finding intersections of hyperbolas. Okay, and so the, the final thing to say is that um, this, this, this thing here is actually uh, the lattice rectum, right? Because if A is the focus of this hyperbola, another way to find uh, this thing Y is that Y is just um, half of the lattice rectum. In other words, Y is B...
<laughs> why is B squared uh, over A? And so in this alternative, um, in this, <laughs> that's my daughter downstairs screaming. Good thing I'm almost done. One second, Ada. So why is, is, why is B squared over A? And so that's uh, 550 uh, squared times 39, if you trust my arithmetic, you should, over A is 2750. And I think when all the dust clears from these numbers, um, you do get uh, 4290. So it's not actually necessary to, to write out the full equation of this hyperbola um, and, uh, and, and, and solve. It turns out that this is actually just the lattice rectum. So okay, two different ways to, to, to find the answer to this problem. Goodbye!